but um, before we like head off, uh, Valentine would take you know what other remnants of his uh, clothes was left because you know he kind of lost some shite, and he'll like rip off, rip off, um, rip off the breast and just kind of uh, tie it and like to a makeshift eye patch. Which seems odd because he's still out of there. All right, so so uh, Valentine, uh, repeat that. I'm <laughs> I was very distracted with. Okay, so Valentine would take whatever remnants are left over his sleeve that he already had like ripped. You know, he already got like damaged and stuff because his clothes have been pretty tattered since he's been hit a few times, especially mm-hmm. that Leomon knife. Um, so, and he's going to, you know, kind of take it and, like, rip the rest of it off and then basically make a makeshift, like, eye patch covering one of his eyes. Ah. Uh, which is a little odd because he still has two eyes there, but yep. that's what he's doing while that group is staring out. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um. Well, while most of you are exiting the, uh, um, flower, you'd likely all come to a stop as your Digimon begin to kneel down and start screaming violently while holding their heads. So comes a puddle. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um. And as they're screaming, you start making out words like... No, no, not again, not again, why? And you'd start hearing them shout your names, like uh, Coronamon would start shouting, Isaac, please, please don't leave me again, no! Where's Coronamon? Uh, he'd probably be inside the flower still. Could I get that over here? So, you guys are going to get Petermon? I'm going to carry my Digimon and Atlas. Go ahead. So, Revy and Isaac are going to get Petermon. Uh, Elise, what are you doing? Well, I'm definitely going to check on. Well, are they still on champion form or are they back to movies? Um, it's really up to you. Most of them probably reverted to rookies. However, you are allowed to keep them in champion if you want. Oh, then. Okay, then. Yeah, I'm going to definitely revert it back. And then mm-hmm. I would try to, like, ask her what's up. Like, why, why are you in, in, like, in pain? And if she can't stand up, I'll try to carry her. And then I'll probably try to, like, Go follow Revy and Isaac to see Peter wants to. Yeah, I'll pick up Sukazimon just kind of like a puddle. Gotcha. And, and uh, so I don't like seeing people hurt, and mm-hmm. we are clearly in pain right now, right? Yes. All right. I guess I will roll for my torment then. Gotcha. My major torment. Um, let's see. Uh... And while he's doing that, uh, Isaac, what would you like to talk to Petermon about? First of all, is he screaming in pain too? Huh? No, it is just your partner's. Wow! No. Wow, Valentine! <laughs> Good job with that roll. Uh, you can mark a mark a box off your major torment. Uh, I've actually almost finished my major torment. That's scary. That would make sense. <laughs> um, all it cost me was an eye witness. <laughs> Listen here, Odin son. <laughs> so, uh. Isaac, he is not screaming in pain. It's just your partners. What the hell did you do to our Digimon? Uh, he just kind of looks at you screaming Digimon? I... What? what? I didn't do that. <laughs> what did you do? 
I'm going to drop Atlas in my Digimon as gently as possible, and I'm going to charge this asshole with my knife. He is going to float. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me yeet it at him. It's not my intention, but don't make me yeet it at him. Uh, I will I will lean over to Elise and I will be like, I think that maybe you should stop them from I think that maybe you should stop them from attacking Petermon. <laughs> Petermon is gonna hold his hands up. Please, please, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and um, I'll probably try to like get in front of Isaac and be like, I don't think that's the answer to it. Maybe we should try like, try to talk things calmly first, and then I'll try to look at Petermon and then I'll ask him, why are you okay and they are not? Uh, I don't know. My Tinkerman, as you can see, are perfectly fine as well. And as he's talking, you, uh, is everyone focused on Peterman? Or? Valentine's looking around, actually. Looking around? Um. Yeah. So, uh, you might not notice... Is anyone specifically paying attention to their Digimon, or are they just kind of holding them while talking to Petermon and the others? I am. So, Re I am. <laughs> so Revy, you would notice your Digimon, and possibly the other Digimon, slowly shift their gaze towards uh, Aster floating around, and they're not happy. I look towards Asker and ask, ask him what's going on. Either tell us what's going on or we will kill you. Uh, well, Remy, I... He's running AI, Remy. I don't think he can be killed. We'll find where he is at <laughs> and kill his system or whatever. <laughs> uh, very good, Valentine, but... I don't know what's going on, but as I'm saying this, they are all getting much more upset and uh, we'll say Coronamon would spew out how many times before Aster would snap his fingers and it, whatever was going on with the Digimon would suddenly stop. As it would freeze and turn around. How many times what? How many times what? Aster would just kind of shrug. I don't know what was going on with them. At this point, Isaac's going to run back over to Coronamon and that was his body and try to check them out and monitor them. They seem fine. Coronamon's actually coming to. Guys, yeah, how are the rest of you? So I'm like go ahead. checking Sukazemon's temperature and stuff, but you know, I don't know if that's actually accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Your hand, as you go to touch his forehead, just kind of goofs through his head a little bit. <laughs> but it seems, it seems like a decent temperature, maybe? <laughs> this water is comfortable. <laughs> his goop yeah, is goopy. Yeah, so about a lukewarm. <laughs> oh, I have two all-time regular ones. Hell yeah. <laughs> Elise. You were just <laughs> on Revy playing games during the stream, and you're over here opening packs. No, actually, I'm, I'm actually. I'm not playing games. You guys aren't playing games. Atlas is convinced that you're just playing that Digimon MMO 24 7. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong, actually. It's only 24 7. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm just organizing because I already opened. I'm not going to do all that kind of stuff during the stream. Because organizing, I don't have to truly focus on. So. Fair yeah, enough. <laughs> um, Elise, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to check out on Luna 1 and see if she's really okay. And then try to look at the others to see how they're doing. Um, 
they're coming to just fine, and they they seem perfectly okay. Whatever was going on with them seems to have stopped. And, uh, for the wreck... Oh, so is Mushman around? Like, no. Is Mushman around? Yeah, Mushman's around, even though Atlas is unconscious. Mushman is, like, kind of, like, lost in his top due to, like, the whole everything that happened previously in all that, so he's, like, trying to remember what happened. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, he probably would have a blank in his memory when a certain uh, angel appeared, but, uh... Um, so is everybody back inside the flower? Is anyone outside of it? Did everyone go back to, uh, yell at Petermon? Well, I did for sure. Yep. I know Isaac and Revy did. Atlas is unconscious, so he doesn't count. <gasps> Valentine, were you with everybody, too? Valentine is taking his dogs out. <laughs> um, but yeah, Isaac, what are you doing right now? Checking on throwing him on an atlas, so I guess at this point I'm just looking around for an answer and waiting for throwing him on to wake all the way up. I was actually giving him the treats because I forgot to after they ate, but I mean, Valentine's kind of behind the group. Mm -hmm. His head's up. Like after he wrapped his eye up and he's checking out Skazimon, he's looking around and like trying to like figure out what might be what might have been causing this. Hmm. Um. So Isaac. Uh, Coronamon, along with the others, have, for the most part, completely woken back up. Though they do not really, if anyone was to pry, they don't really remember what was going on with them. Um, Valentine, I'll take a... Better yet, just tell, let me know what your perception is. Just roll perception? Oh, wait, just tell you the number? Yeah. Uh, so it's three, six plus seven is my perception. Okay, you will definitely need to roll me a perception. <laughs> also, you guys no longer get an accuracy bonus since we have to redo our stats. <laughs> and charisma is not my highest. Heads up. I got four. Val! Oh my God. Val, what? what is going on? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm ready. <laughs> you are so ready. Um, so as you cover your eye and your sight dulls, your other senses awaken now. But you do hear pretty far in the distance in the woods what sounds like screaming? It is muffled, I but... I omens give me sight beyond sight. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be like, so I hear screaming coming from the, what was it, the woods? Yes, the nice, pretty, pretty forest. <laughs> I'm hearing screams coming from the forest. I think we should go and check that out. And, like, almost as if a man possessed, he starts heading that way, like, slowly. All right. Well, what's everyone else doing? You know, I'll scoop up my little pile of bodies and turn to Petermon. You're coming with us. And Petermon would let you know, I would love to, but I I physically cannot leave this area. Did you have a question for Petermon as well, Reese? Well, I was actually asking him a while ago, like, well, why is he okay and stuff? That's all so far. Asking Petermon why he's okay? Mm-hmm. You mean while your Digimon were writhing in pain? Um, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't know why your Digimon are not okay. So why can't you leave the area? Well, I'm the guardian of this ley line, and with that comes certain abilities that I am not allowed to uh, traverse beyond this point. What do you mean by ley lines? 
what are those things? Well, the ley lines are, how to put it, if in your human body you have veins running through you which carry your lifeblood throughout you, the ley lines are like that for this digital world. However, m most, if not all of them, have been corrupted by this point, but I'm the guardian of yep. this one, and thank you so much for purifying uh, it, by the way. Are there, like, moral keys, like, out, yeah, in other parts of the digital world? Oh, there's plenty. The land of beauty is the heart of the entire digital world. There's ley lines all over. Then I look at Isaac and Rebbe, wondering if they're, like, curious about this ley lines or not. Who's the next closest one? Ah, uh, well, you wouldn't want to go there. May I suppose if you headed, and he'd point a certain direction in the forest, I suppose if you headed that way, you'd eventually run into a corrupted ley line. But aren't you tired? Wouldn't you like to stop at... Oh, oh dear. Oh, right, the village. <laughs> it's now the city. Uh, do you have any idea who are the other guardians of the ley lines are? Oh, well, not quite. I know that around here there was, I believe, I believe Wormmon was one. That that was the closest one I knew of. Is there a way for us to find out if they are a guardian or not? Um, well, when you approach the ley... I'll say this, when you approach the ley line, they will likely be the most important person there. However, if it's corrupted, much like myself, you will have a hard time figuring out if they're that important or not. Chances are they'll be... Well, you saw what happened to me. So there's a chance for you to get corrupted again? I will do everything in my power to keep this ley line from being corrupted. However, considering we're still surrounded by the corruption, it will eventually happen again. You seem pretty useless. Well, we weren't designed to fight this. Whatever this is. Also, Valentine! Um, mm -hmm. since you kind of wandered off and everyone's questioning Petermon, you come upon a rather, uh... A rather unfortunate, rather extremely unfortunate sight all by yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, you find Piedmon lounging in a lazy boy recliner with a newspaper in one hand and a monocle as he sips some coffee, but... <laughs> But when he sets the coffee down, he starts to spin a little rotisserie thing. And this spins a little blade. And if you follow your eyes up, you see a fire and you see little Pudotomons hanging off of a rope, slowly giving up their strength and falling onto the blade as a Beoman shrieks in terror running on a treadmill, unable to catch her falling babies as they die. Uh... What the hell are you doing? And as you yell at Piedmon, he spits his coffee on the newspaper he was reading. Oh, you're back! And he throws the newspaper away and gets out of the chair. Thank you so much for this! Um... 
I'm confused. <laughs> all of Valentine's like, what do you mean? I've done nothing for you. All of this, he throws his arms out. Look at how beautiful this world has become. You purified a ley line. Normally, if I killed these babies, no one would bat an eye. But he'd walk over to the Beomon running on the treadmill and slowly lick at her eyes as tears are falling. Now I get to enjoy this sweet suffering thanks to you. Um, Sukaze, I'm going to direct Sukaze Mon to throw a uh, destructive card throw at Piedmon. <laughs> I also probably need to make a check because I'm sitting up this badly hurt again. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and probably for my minor because anxiety and he's thanking me for this. Excuse me. <laughs> And well, this for the major. And while uh, Val is doing that, um, you all were questioning Petermon about the ley lines. Uh, he did let you know that the corruption being all around would eventually lead to his ley line being corrupted again, but. If there was anything he could do to. Assist you, he would. Um, but can, can we ask, like, if there's a way to, like, prevent the corruption in some way? He would put his hands together and thought, I don't fully understand what the corruption is, so I can't give you a straight answer, but you did purify this ley line, so if you continue to do so, then surely there's a way we can fight back against this corruption. And I look at Rebby and Isaac and wonder, like, and ask them, so do you guys need to know anything else? Or do you think we should follow Val now? Give us something for helping you. Uh, I can offer survival. Well, we don't want tips. We <laughs> want an item that will help us. Peterman would look around. Uh, um. <laughs> we want the most prized flower in your garden. Something that is truly beneficial. If you give us something useless, you will die today. You you drive a hard bargain, man. <laughs> we could just not uncorrupt it the next time we come through here. I I fail to see how that benefits you. <laughs> I'll kill everything here. Peterman would think. The DM didn't prepare awards for mission completion. <laughs> I gave you awards. I didn't prepare for you to hassle a poor NPC for his wares. We're about to become loot hobos, okay? <laughs> Peterman has nothing to give. He has been... You just gave him back his kingdom. He has everything. You gave him back a small plot of land? Well, he... We're taking his plot of land. He hasn't been mentally well for who knows how long. Um. So, uh, Valentine, that was for your major. Did you make other roles? Well, I wasn't told if I passed on the torment. Oh, uh, yes, in fact, uh, once again, you mark a box off. You mark a box right. off as long as you can pass 12. Okay. Yep. So, all right, and then I need to make a attack roll. 
Uh, 14. <laughs> so and greedy he's... scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Mon. Uh, uh, give me something or I will kill you right now. <laughs> Peter Mon would fly around and pick a flower. Will this do? <laughs> I mean, how this guy fits me. How does seven successes get me? Uh, that was with no rerolls, my dude. Yeah, but if you were attacking someone normal, it would do you pretty well. Um, you tore Paimon's favorite tie. But as you attack Paimon, you do see it graze his jacket. However, it almost seems intentional as the card is redirected at one of the little babies. And as this card flies towards the baby, Piedmon would be like, No, no! Oh dear lord, you got robbed by the feelings! Oh, you poor child! <laughs> That's okay, because guess what? I can just dissipate the card, Aster. And the card would dissipate. <laughs> Fucking dick. <laughs> I will, like, I will just be like, leave those baby Digimon alone. Well, if you're so insistent, Piedmon would throw a blanket over them and they would vanish. Not the Beelmon, but the babies would vanish. And the treadmill that the Beelmon was running on would disappear causing her mostly to run over to the blanket and scour aimlessly for her children. Where did you put the children? Oh, wherever. Anywhere, really. I want to know where now. <laughs> Piedmon would chuckle a little bit. I'm sure you do, but I have places to be. Well, then get out of here. That said, I really recommend that you go retrieve what you have lost. And with that, Piedmon would bid you adieu and disappear. Alright, I will... I will, like, the Beelmon is looking for her babies, right? Yes. I will, Beelmon, please, come over here. Uh, I can only use this once, and so I'm going to do it in order to assist. Then I will go ahead and use my only special Piedmon card to use his abilities to get the babies back. I will allow this. And the Beomon, well, as you use your card, Piedmon would appear. What a trifling use of such a useful item, but good on you. And the babies would reappear as he works his magic before vanishing once again. And the Beomon would run to the babies that were still alive thanking you endlessly for what you've done for her. I will say, there is a Digimon who is the guardian of the ley line that we have purified up over there with the flowers. Your babies and you will be safer there. And she'll again thank you. 
I'm so glad that there's somewhere for us to go since they wouldn't let us into the city. <laughs> and she'll make her way towards the ley line. Um. We purify one ley line and fucking evil clown already going on a murder's <laughs> rampage. <laughs> um. Yes, so the Peterman lets you know, Revy, that the flower does have data from the ley line, so it may have use, but what use, he does not know, and there is nothing else you could possibly get from him. Interesting. And what would happen if you were to die? Well, this ley line would be without a guardian. Hmm. And oh. then I would walk away. Your bonds do have a sword. What? <laughs> that's cool. Wait, hold on. I'll turn back around. Yeah, you have a sword. sword. <laughs> you have two swords. Yeah, I want one of those. But if I give you the sword, who will defend the ley line? No, your body and whoever comes. Give me the sword. <laughs> well, there's little Peter Mann can do about it, so if he's being mugged, <laughs> you can have a sword. I don't want it now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hat oh my god. No, no. <laughs> oh my cool. god. I'll, I'll go follow where... <laughs> no. Sounds like this. Was... Isaac's just over there like, can I have his underwear? <laughs> I bet you it would sell the sister, Mom. That's <laughs> some good boy over here, bro. What you got? My god. <laughs> Do I get a special Biomon card? Uh, yes. Yes. You do get a special Biomon card. Um, and Elise, what are you doing as Revy and Isaac are bullying Peter Mon? <laughs> well, for one thing, I'll be a, a little bit lost for such what they're trying to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> is there not any doing much and I'm kind of worried about Cloud and the screen so um, I'll try to like just take Luna one with me and try to go find Bao. <laughs> All right um so you'll be the first to reconnect with Bao and Revy and Isaac you'll come into their conversation after a little bit. I am going to be right back, but while I am gone, Valentine, start your conversation with Elise over what has transpired. If you wish to. Alright, so, uh, as you're heading my way, you'll probably come up the part wherever he's talking to Leomon, and um, probably hear him say that there is a Digimon over there, it's protecting the ley line, we have purified, it's safer there. Um, you know, so you'll come in on the Biomon, like, being like, thank you, thank you, and then heading off past you. How about we just look at the Biomon and look at you and say, so what just happened? And try to go to you. Well, you remember our murderous clown acquaintance? Okay, what about him? As soon as we purify one, Leyline, he started torturing and killing that poor Biomon's babies. That's horrible. Yeah, while the group was busy trying to get stuff from Peterman, I ended up having to deal with Titan. Um, I wasn't able to defeat him, but I was able to convince him to leave. And that special Piedmon card that I was given a while back, I, I was able to use it to get the babies back because he made them disappear after he's dead. Mm -hmm. By any chance, do you know where he went to? No. I, he, the fact that he can walk makes it very hard to tell where he's at. 
Mm. All I know is that I need to get stronger. So if I see him again, I can actually stop him from doing the terrible things he wants. That sounded really terrible. If ever, um, ask her. I'll try to, like, look around to see if I notice anything. All right. So, I I have just returned. How has the conversation went since I've I've been away? You came back right on time because she uh, asked you about something. So, so you caught Elise up, and now she's asking me of something. Well, I would like I want I want to kind of try to use my perception and look around the area. The area. Okay. Also, Valentine. Uh, while I was away, I. I had a thought. You do not get a special Beelmon card. You actually get a special card called uh, called the uh, Leyline of the Welcoming Woods, and you see Beelmon and oh. her children playing with Petermon and the Tinkerman of the Leyline. Oh. Um. That's cute. So. Uh, yes, Elise, make your perception check, and Isaac and Revy, uh, you probably came in at the tail end of whatever conversation they were having. Hi, Monmouth here, huh? What did you want? He was, as soon as we purified the ley line, he was torturing and killing the poor Beelmont's babies, so I dealt with him. He did just want to be entertained. Did you kill him? <laughs> I wish. I am not strong enough to kill Pipeline. Then you didn't deal with him. Of the mega level, but I stopped him from tormenting the poor BM on her babies. And, and you get I out convinced of him to leave. What did I get out of it? <laughs> Some peace and quiet. Yeah. Um, not for long, likely. Five also, months, and, he'll pull, and he'll pull out his special card. I have these cards that let me do special things, and this is the one that I've received for helping them. Likely, since it is a ley line card, it is strong and will come in handy, so that way it'll hopefully ease your mind a little bit, Ravi, that I got something that could assist us in the future. Um, so, Elise, from where you are, you you don't see much new. You see that, uh, once again, the forest is very pretty. You see, uh, you see Digimon actually playing. You see young Digimon playing around the forest, which definitely would have never happened before unless they were trying to trick you into eating some toxic fruit. <laughs> Revy. <laughs> um... <laughs> You see walls in the distance, uh, but perhaps most catching with your excellent perception rule is that when you look to a stream, you actually see a reflection, Elise, of yourself and your friends. However, your friends look a little bit closer to those creatures that you saw in the fog so long ago. But it's only for a moment. Once that happens, I'll probably like look quickly at them and try to see if they still look like that. Like how they look like in their reflection and then look back at the stream they again. Like um, no, when you actually look at them outside of the reflection, they look like their normal selves. Um I'll probably try to get my phone and be like, trying to talk to Aster and be like, why do they look like that? Why do they look like the ones from the, from the ones I saw before in the fog? Huh. Why did they look like the ones from the fog, Elise? Yeah. What are yeah. what like are you? The features. I mean, the whatever I saw on the stream, the reflection. Uh, I, while I don't know what you saw on the stream, what reflection you're talking about, it is true that you have been unable to say their names since you left the, uh, since you left the fog. So, maybe there's a connection? 
Why did that happen? Like, do you have any idea why or that what caused it? Uh, Aster would think and try to make himself a little bit useful. Well, uh, the only, the easiest possibilities coming to mind are either that your the people traveling with you are the creatures from the fog, which I highly doubt, or that perhaps you're getting a little paranoid? I try to be like, think, and then I look at them and be like, oh, guys, have you ever, like, wondered about your names and why you can't say them or, you know, call each other what they're supposed to call each other? Hmm? What do you mean? Well, ever since you've been there, like, you can't really, like, well, you guys can't really call each other your names, and I can't call your names so far. Like, haven't you guys ever wondered about it? Well, I will say that I do think we need to go back to that area where our supposed names were stolen for one good piece of evidence that Piedmont gave me was that we need to get our names back. Logically, the only thing that that could mean is whenever we were traversing in that cavern-like area where the creatures were grappling at us all, and after we said our names and they suddenly vanished from our lips, I think we need to get them back. Don't know how we would do that, but... So do you guys have any idea or anything? Or Aster, like, can you, like, do you have any idea, like, where we can start off with this? Well... I certainly don't know what's going on with your guys' names. However, uh, you did lose them in that ravine, as far as I can tell. So perhaps tracing your steps back to there, which would lead you back to the village, I believe? Well, we have a destination and a mission. I, I will say that... <laughs> After all these events, mm -hmm. you guys probably could tell that Valentine is not as happy-go-lucky and jokey or yeah. talking as much as he normally is. He seems very jaded. <laughs> all that meditation, I would son. Valentine goes by Hambrabi now. No. <laughs> Um, so what but is... if we are going to go back there, then I think we need to awaken our friend here so that Mushman and him can assist us. How deep is the stream? Uh... Don't even ask, just throw him in. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes the Atlas now. <laughs> it's not that deep. <laughs> Are you guys throwing Atlas in the stream? Yes. I'm sure yet. I mean, I guess it's ultimately on Isaac unless Revy rips Atlas away from him. <laughs> no, it, might, it might be smart to get to the village and then where we can rest. And maybe Wait. he will awaken Wait. on his own time. Better yet, uh, as Revy is talking about throwing Atlas into the stream, and Isaac is humoring the idea, um, I think that this is the perfect time, just like always, for Atlas to wake up to hear this conversation. I want to hear this conversation. Atlas will... Try to get out of Isaac's grasp and run out. I'll just drop him the moment he's conscious. Shit. 
<laughs> Alice, where are you running to? South. South? Okay. Just lands and fluffs it. Okay. We'll we'll come back to you, Atlas. Don't worry. <laughs> I know where you're going. Um Now for the others, what are you guys doing? Fluff is being watching him run. And watching Mushman probably chase after him, yes. <laughs> Are you well, probably try to follow Atlas for sure. <laughs> Isaac Valentine, are you following Isaac or are you are you sticking to the mission? Well, so if Elise takes off, like goes to follow Atlas, Valentine understands that we're safer in a group than we are uh, separately. So, in order to protect those two. Um, he knows that Remy and Isaac are smart enough to handle themselves, but he knows that Atlas can kind of get distracted mm -hmm. um, by, you know, multiple things. So uh, being how his personality is, he would follow Elise and Atlas and try to go help them out. He'll probably just keep running if I follow. I'll meet you guys in the village. Remy, are you following Isaac or are you following the others? Okay, so we will return to the uh, the Atlas Trio and a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Isaac and Ravi, you eventually come to very large gates with very large, almost chess piece looking creatures guarding them. One a centaur, one a bishop. <laughs> halt! Who goes there? Saviors of the ley line, missionaries of the church. <laughs> oh, the worthless human lot. We've been expecting you. Excuse me? Blank stare. <laughs> Wait, Ravi, what's your charisma? <laughs> My charisma? Uh, it is... I don't even have to look up. Nice <laughs> by the way. It's five. five. Okay, not worthy of note. Worthless human lot. <laughs> well, to be fair, um... We are, you know, trying to keep our team kind of balanced. So, oh, Elise yeah. has the most uh, charisma. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Um, which is, uh, which is good. But uh, they will still frown upon uh, Rebbe and Isaac, especially Isaac. But uh, at any rate, while it pains us to say you are allowed in the village as you have been requested by our leader. I hope. Our leader, Magna Angemon. Okay. I know y'all don't like me, but that don't make you stupid. It's a simple question. <laughs> Not all questions need answering, human. Keep that in mind, Never mind. <laughs> and they'll return to their post as the gate opens. And there'll be a very knightly looking person waiting for you. <laughs> Who are you? I go by Nightmon. Who were those at the front? <laughs> that was. Pawn Rookman and Pawn. No, that was Rookman and Bishop on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, take us to Magna Angela. 
when are we gonna meet king and queen mom <laughs> not anytime soon but uh <clears throat> very well let us go and uh it will take some time but eventually atlas elise and valentine you will all arrive at atlas's favorite place the black and white ocean well, the cliff facing. Yes. Well, I'll probably try to, like, call to Atlas and be like, Hey, Atlas, stop running. It's where the heck do you plan to go? Did you reply, Atlas? No. Oh, okay. He's, um, like, he's like closed off. So, <laughs> um, so are are you rolling for your torment, or are you just accepting your fate? I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll just for the fun of it. <laughs> At least make a roll to uh, try to you know calm that Um. Yes, but it's it's definitely going to be a. Wow, Atlas! Good job. You don't actually have a mental break this time. <laughs> I failed. Um. Yes, but you didn't critically fail. There's a difference. <laughs> so, Atlas, you, you are very disturbed by what you see. You are very not okay with what you see, but you do not feel like you're drowning in the ocean right now. <laughs> no, but... He feels close to it. He does. He does. So, as he feels close to it, what's the game plan, Atlas? <laughs> I'm gonna first Atlas is probably gonna go and grab his uh, climbing gear that's left on the cliff. As I said, he's not having a mental break, so I suppose he is coherent enough to do something like that as the zombies are approaching him once more. And, and, and doing that. Valentine and Elise, you see him uh, wading his way towards the zombies in the climbing gear. Wait, he's heading towards the zombies? Atlas... Yeah, I'm going towards my the climbing gear he used to climb the cliff. Oh, okay. Uh, Atlas, I can just have Sukaze Mom reach it with flight. He, he doesn't answer, he still just goes and grabs it himself. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have Sukaze Mom, like, create cards, kind of like make a barrier of cards blocking off these zombies from Atlas so he can get his stuff. <gasps> okay. Uh let's see. Uh Atlas, give me give me a, a, a athletics athletics roll. You still have the minus four, right? You do. Well, it's minus four now. Is it minus four? I think it's minus three. Yeah, minus three. So is it like minus six in general? Uh, no, it, it doesn't affect your skills. That's our core stats. Ignore yep. what we do to caps. Uh, 
Okay, that's not bad. So I suppose that you, uh, I will allow you to retrieve your climbing gear before you are mauled to death by zombies, thanks to Sakazimon's help. Woo! I did something. <laughs> and once you have your climbing gear, Atlas, what are you doing? Away from the ocean. So, back in the direction you came from? You just start running and general direction, so it's like westward, but like towards, he's going to skip the village entirely and just run straight like, west-north, or northwest. Okay. And Elise and Valentine, Atlas has retrieved his climbing gear and is now running in a random direction away from the ocean. What, what is, uh, what's on your plates? Well, I look at Val and be like, should we do, should we follow him? Well, I think, you know, he trusts you more than he trusts any of us, so I think you might be able to convince him to slow down and, um, stay with us at least. Uh, now this was quite the chase, so Elise, I will take an endurance roll from you, and also, Atlas, uh, give me a, give me a, a knowledge, give me a persuasion roll from Mushman. Wow, not, not terrible so you're not out of breath yet elise um <laughs> poor mushman he's ugly <laughs> um but mushman does know enough you're ugly okay <laughs> Charisma is directly related to uh to your appearance, but um, <laughs> Mushman does know enough to tell Atlas that he has lived in the digital world for a long time, and that Atlas is actually heading directly towards the ocean, and Mushman is going to try to guide Atlas away from the ocean and towards the city. Scientist agrees that Mushman is cute. <laughs> I'm not saying Mushman is ugly by design. I'm just saying that he does not have a very favorable <laughs> charm to him right now. <laughs> But Elise is uh, Elise. Are you following Atlas? Well, I'll probably try to follow him. Yeah, and then I wonder if I can use my aspects on him to try to calm him down and hopefully make him listen to us. Well, that all depends on if he stops running. And uh, Valentine, are you going along with Elise to keep her safe, or yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Um. So, back to those who are at the uh, village. Um, ba -ba -ba. The village has actually transformed quite a bit since you've been inside of it. Not only are there large walls surrounding it now, it's much closer to like a, uh, a bustling urban town. I wouldn't quite go as far as to say a city, but it's a very nice place. And you do see little Digimon hopping around as Nightmon leads you towards the temple where Magna Angemon is. Hmm. 
Uh, Abby? No, I'm just here looking at the tiny digital ones jumping around. <laughs> You will notice that, uh, well, they are jumping around peacefully. They don't all look that happy, actually, but they're still cute. <laughs> and Isaac? Oh, did you run that by me one more time? As Nightmon leads you to the temple where Magnangemon awaits, uh, you do notice that the village that you were just in that was super dilapidated and run down is now actually quite nice. Like, a bustling town. And with... We were, like, approached with anything specifically. Uh, no, you weren't approached with anything specifically. Uh, you see little Digimon uh, jumping around, being cute. I'm going to tell Coronamon to keep an eye out for the war and data, Mon. <laughs> gotcha. Um, you do not see them, but as you uh, guys go, eventually, you make your way to the temple, and Nightmon lets you know that Magna Angemon awaits inside. The temple is very large, very big pillars with stone with marbled steps leading up to it, and a very large doorway. With, uh, very large, but not super heavy doors to push open. They're mostly there for show. Before we try that, I'm going to turn to the night, Mom. This is an awful lot of construction to happen in a short time. What did you guys do? It's not what we did, human. It's what you did. First of the city belongs to us. <laughs> oh my god, he built itself? More like the city was always here and you just sort of restored it a little bit. Was the city always under your control before the corruption? Most of this land was under the control of the Church of Beauty, yes. Church of Beauty? You consider yourself beautiful? I am lower on the totem pole than most, unfortunately. However, I am still leagues better than you humans. I don't think so. <laughs> well, your thoughts are irrelevant. Only the beautiful get to decide, after all. Happy you don't get to decide anything <laughs> since you're not beautiful. I'll lead her with you. I'm something beautiful decided on you. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for the ride, boss. We're going to go talk to you. Enjoy. Um. So, who makes their way inside first? Me and my little player, of course. <laughs> So, much like uh, Valentine being greeted to quite the horrific sight by Piedmon of Misery, you are greeted to quite the, uh, quite the sight in a different direction. As you walk in, you see show lights shining down as many steps with very with a large red velvet carpet leading down the steps comes up and there's golden pillars all around the steps themselves are made of gold and you see what looks like those demonic creatures from Revy's Nightmare I think they went by Devamon uh, chained up by the ankles on the sides of the stairs leading up Wearing clown-like masks, with red smiles, with trays of food. And at the very top of these stairs, you see a couch with a shirtless Magna Angemon laying on the laps of a Lady Devamon and Angelomon feeding him grapes. Oh, holy. 
So this is where you waste your time? This is where I enjoy my time, thank you very much. Correction, waste it. <laughs> well, we're out here doing the work. <laughs> well, best to leave the labor to the undesirables, after all. And he'll continue to eat his grapes. <laughs> Why are we here? What do you want? Up the stairs, Isaac's going to be checking over his shoulder at all of the red smiles because, you know, well, she placed that here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, is Isaac more concerned with the, uh, the red smiles or the fact that, uh... <laughs> They're all chained together. Well, never mind that. Uh, Magna Angemon... We all work together. <laughs> Magna Angemon will let you know. I decided that even though you all aren't the most beautiful I've ever met, obviously, that because you've restored this town to its former glory and given me this luxury, that I will allow you to come and go as you please. For now, anyway. Do you know Bajo Leoman's dead? He would hold his hand over his mouth. Travesty. You did nothing? Well, honestly, now that it sounds like this, who needs him? Is there any place else I can go before I slaughter you in here? Whatever they are. Well, you can try to slaughter whoever you want. Then you wouldn't get very far, but even if you did, you'd just leave a lot of orphans alone and helpless. They'd be better off. <laughs> and then I turn away, turn around and leave. And you, Barista, do you have anything you wish to discuss? Barista? You've accepted our ilk into your town. Are Noir and Datamon still here? <laughs> oh, Noir and Datamon are around wherever. I don't believe they're in this town, though. Shame, they would have been useful to you. Hmm. They were. They were. <laughs> So, Atlas, well, first, Isaac, are you continuing the conversation? I forget, did Remy leave or is she still standing here? <laughs> she left. <laughs> Isaac will turn to leave and pause in front of one of the red masks. How long have you been here? And as you pause and start, uh pause and start to talk to one of the red masks, it will hold food out towards you. Maybe next time. And then Isaac will leave. <laughs> and... Alright. Atlas... Did Mushman successfully guide you back towards the city, or did you continue to run in that direction? He just, like, hold and drag Atlas to pivot himself to go back to the village. Mm-hmm. Like, he tried to block him so he, he moves, like, towards the village. It took, so, it took a while, but... He eventually got it. Gotcha. Um, so, yes, eventually then, you, Elise, and um, Valentine would make your way to the village walls. However, you definitely wouldn't come from the standard direction of... Uh, 
of the gates and Lady Devamon and a uh, Lady Devamon would be watching over the walls. Oh, you finally made it. We've been waiting for you. Uh, Valentine's eye will like widen when you see the Lady Devamon. Just kind of, like, not in a bad way, just be like, huh. Didn't expect to see a Lady Devamon. The Church of Beauty does not discriminate between virus or vaccine. And this will like try to like look at her and hopefully I can use my decipher in that role here. Uh sure. Not bad, but please, I will also take a a perform role from you. But why perform from these if she's just a second intent? Oh, I'll come to that. Well, damn. Nice, nice. So the Lady Devamon does not pick up that you're trying to read her at all. Um, but she does seem genuine in the fact that they were waiting for the three of you to come to the town. And she doesn't seem to hold any malice towards you. I'll probably ask her, like, so why are you actually waiting for us? Why are you expecting us? Well, there's very few safe places in this land. So, when you guys restored the ley lines, it was only natural you'd come back to this, uh, this village. I look at Val and like, well, I don't sense that she means not a thing bad, but do you think that we can trust her? Hmm. Well, I mean, we did purify the ley line, and if you remember correctly, before the Church of Beauty was like this, um, they liked the way I looked in the shrine, and I mean, I don't think they disliked how you looked either, so I think that it's safe to say that they, that we can trust her. Try to look around and check on Atlas and what he's doing right now. Atlas, what are you doing as you come to the walls of the city? Just like... And by the, the wall. Like, Mushmouth's just, like, standing in front of me, like, in a protective stance, and I'm just standing there, like, blank, sta blank stare. <laughs> gotcha. Just try trying to catch up as to what happened. Right. Especially with your missing memories and the like. What thing memories? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, the Lady Devamon will escort you all to one of the gates and give you access. What um, would... Yes? I will kind of, in order to, you know, basically ease Elise's mind, mm -hmm. I guess I will, like, kind of, uh... You know, I guess flirt with the Lady Devamon to see if she, you know, to basically, he's like, oh, you were waiting for us. Well, that is how nice someone as beautiful as you kind of deal since they all admire beauty. Mm -hmm. And see if she, like, reacts with disdain or is like, oh, yes. And then it's, you know, all friendly. Because oh. at least that way, maybe she, you know, 
we can see if she's truly trying to fuck with us or not. <laughs> right, uh... So, tell me again what you say, just so I know better how to respond. Uh, I will say, I thought you've been waiting for us, you know. Well, I am so, I'm so glad that someone as beautiful as you have been waiting for us. I, you know, look forward to you guiding us into this facility. <laughs> but of course... Do consider yourselves lucky that Magnangemon sent one of his best. Well, I do. Um, and so after they say Magnangemon, I'll just be like, I think we can send more trust here. Okay, um, yeah, so she does end up guiding you into the gates, and she lets you know that your friends already went to see Magna Angemon, and that you're free to go where you'd like within the city. Well, I'm glad that the others have made it. Yes. So, is there anywhere within the village you would like to go? Um, I'm sure that perhaps there were tasks that you might have had within the village, or places that you planned on going. Well, I think, I know that we were wanting to rest for, like, Trying to get our names back, mm -hmm. but um, I guess I will ask Elise if she thinks that we should go looking for the others and meet up with them. At least. I'm definitely not opposed to like meeting up with them first and then try to see what we can do together. All right, and Atlas, are you sticking with the group? Are you tailing in the back, or are you uh, wandering off? He's, he's probably going to be tailing in the back with Bushman, like, dragging him behind, like, holding hand. Gotcha. Only to eventually, like, do a wrong turn and disappear in the crowd. <laughs> Only to go find solitude as he is he is in a crowd. So uh Elise Valentine, you do eventually meet up with Rabbi and Isaac. Yeah, I see we're still down about it to be alive. He is fine. Uh, Valentine will start to speak up, but then he'll stop and he'll uh, basically uh, like nudge for Elise to continue. Mm -hmm. So, guys, what do you plan to do now? Well, our Lord and Savior Priest Fancy Pants gave us free passage to and from the village. And, uh, Army of slaves in there, though, that's not sitting too well with me. Do you guys any have, uh, do you guys want to check them out or something, or? It would be pretty rough. That area is under lock and key. Getting them out of here won't be the easiest thing. And surely they'll be quite upset when we do. So, the only thing, and it's not that I don't want to help them, I always want to help, but 
I think that we should wait on trying to free them until after we've purified more ley lines. Because as it stands now, they're not, you know, in danger. And we already have so many enemies. I don't think making Magna Angelmar another would be a smart idea at this point. Well, we don't have much of a guide, but I'm sure if we talk to one of the night fellows, they'll at least point us to a bed. Meantime, did any of you get a chance to look around? Not yet. Do you guys want to check the, the area around first before we like try to rest up or something? I think I might ask Magna Angelmon if they perhaps have a tailor of sorts, because from all the different attacks I've taken, my clothes have become rather <laughs> torn and well, messed I'm up. I'm certain he'd be happy to adorn you in the finest of linens to hide mm. our gross. Well, that's the thing. They liked how I looked. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, I don't want my clothes getting in the way of, you know, like a trip over my torn pants or any of that wouldn't be helpful at all. I might even be able to hook you up with a fancier eye patch, Odin son. Well, once I have cleaned up and pulled out my mask, I will put that on instead. <laughs> mask. It's <laughs> okay. Yes, inf Inframon. I ripped it off of his face. <laughs> okay. And then Valentine will head towards Magda Angelmon to ask about maybe getting his clothes at least tuned up to the point where they're not just, you know, getting mm. in my way. And. Though I intended for it to be almost a mental disturbance for you, I feel as though you almost welcome, uh, Valentine, whenever you look in a window, a mirror, anything of a reflection of sorts, you don't see the cloth, uh, face covering that, uh, that you put on. But rather, you see the Mask of Inferman, and you simply accept it as a part of who you are. I'm assuming. Oh, that's where I put the mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said my clothes, though. What are my clothes looking like? Because you said that my clothes didn't look like what I had on. Your clothes? Yeah, you said no, something about no. clothes. Uh, the, the cloth... Face covering that you. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was a little confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, he right. goes, Oh, silly me. I must have been letting my fatigue get the best of me. I already had the mask on. I put it on early. <laughs> Such a fool I am. And, um. So. You're going to see Magna What are the rest of. What are the rest of you doing? Atlas is. Finding a quiet corner somewhere to read. Well, I guess once everyone is like safe and like doing their own thing, I'll probably like try to explore the village and maybe see if I can find something useful or know something useful. Um, gotcha. So, uh, as you wander around, you do end up seeing, uh, some familiar baby Digimon from the last time you were in the village in a much nicer looking pub. I tried to go to, to 
go inside the pub, just check out who's inside and see if there's anybody who's interesting there. Um, you encounter the baby Digimon from last time. Uh, well, some of them. Oh, you're that human girl from back when, uh, back when the boss was around. I'll probably ask Eliza, so how are you guys doing right now? Well, we're safe. Do you guys have any idea regarding the ley line? The, the ley what? Ley line. Uh, we, we don't really know about uh, ley lines. I, I think that that was a part of the geography class. that they don't seem to know much about it like... um well they are they are baby digimon so um so per... they don't really know too much of the harder stuff basically yes okay. uh, perhaps perhaps you could well i mean i i never would recommend visiting well I don't want to speak poorly of Magna Angemon, but he might know something. Oh, I say thanks, and do you guys need <laughs> anything or something? Uh, I, I just wish that... No, no, we're fine. Are you guys sure? Well... It seems like more of us just disappear every day, but it just comes with the territory, I guess. Do you guys have any idea where they're brought to, or like who's taking them? No, it's it's kind of been this way ever since the city sprung up and the church moved in. Things were a lot better They're when the boss was around. The babies for eternal beauty. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good theory. <laughs> it could just be Piedmon stealing more babies, too. That, too. <laughs> I'll probably ask them, like, so do you guys think that if you, like, move to the church or something, would you guys be more safe there? We've never left the village and well from what we understand there's nowhere really safe outside of the village well is there any other way to prevent this or no if, if we knew <laughs> we we'd probably have done it <laughs> you're you're fine ma'am like please don't don't worry about us so We're... after that, I probably like try to that, move out of the pub, and then I'll try to like look around to see if I find Isaac or Val. Um, you wouldn't find Val because he's on a mission. But Isaac, what were you doing? Yeah, generic exploring for the most part, trying to get the lay of the village. Um, so yeah, you'd probably spot. Isaac is, he's walking into a motel. Oh. <laughs> Living it up in the hotel, <laughs> Digimon, yeah. <laughs> oh, I probably tried to, like, walk behind him and see if he notices my presence. <laughs> um, Isaac, Give me a perception roll. I hope you roll poor roll poorly. <laughs> well, then again, track, I accidentally just closed my sheet and I have new numbers. Then again, you're not Atlas, so I don't know if that's actually possible for you. I have a minus three to what I believe is a plus fifteen. <laughs>
Um, but while you're doing that, Valentine, uh, you make your way to the very extravagant, very gaudy temple. All right. <laughs> I will, uh, just kind of, just kind of, like, walk forward and... You know, I guess approach, if I'm allowed to approach. You would be allowed to approach. Hello. I was wondering if you had anyone here that could assist me in um, fixing up... Well, who, who could fix up my clothes? They're all battle-torn, and I do not wish for them to get in the way of combat if it ensues. Down the future. Oh, child. People like you shouldn't be in combat. You should leave that to the others. But yes, I can definitely get your clothes tailored for you. It wouldn't do to have them, one of the more beautiful of the humans wandering around in tattered clothes like that. That would be oh, greatly appreciated. <laughs> Um, also, Isaac, uh, well, before that, uh, Magnangemon does lift his hand, and one of the seat pillows that he was using, Angelomon, does get up and guides you away to, uh, look after your clothes. Keep it in your pants, Val. Literally. Listen, if the, if the Angelomon's coming unto me, that's not my problem. <laughs> Well, she is certainly trying. She will certainly be trying to rip your pants off, at least. But um, she's got to fix my clothes somehow. Fall out here being the link to Mastamon. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. You know, but mostly for the clothes. But I wouldn't be adverse to messing with an angel woman. I know you already did a nun. But did not. She tried to shoot me. Thank you. <laughs> New she pulled out her mom. gun. But, um... Isaac, almost before Elise even begins to tail you, you feel almost a chill go down your spine as you feel like you're being watched. Do I attribute it to Elise, or...? Uh, yes. It, it takes you very little time to realize that Elise is trying to walk behind you, not necessarily stealthfully, just without actually calling towards to you or anything of the sort. I can taste colors. Come <laughs> on, I think we have a star. Want to have some fun? Ooh, I would love to. I can just keep up pace. And Isaac's going to start walking faster and see what happens. <laughs> well, Elise, uh, as you did not call to Isaac, he has begun to pick up his pace. Seems he's heading somewhere in a hurry. Try to walk, like, as fast as I can while looking around, wondering what made him walk faster. <laughs> Would you like to give me a perception check? For sure. I forget she's the other person with good perception <laughs> in the group. Mm. Well, it's hard to say what made him walk faster. However, you do notice as you pass by certain mirrors that he is looking slightly closer to an anteater in those mirrors with slightly longer fingers and sharper teeth. Like his reflection? Yes. Um, as I see that, I slightly panic and then wonder if he's really Isaac. So I try to get closer to him and see like, hey, are you really 
I can. I still can't say his name, right? No, no, you cannot. Um, I'll probably like walk up to him and be like, "Hey, do you know me?" Did you have to ruin all the fun? Of course I do. Mm, I'll probably like be suspicious of him and be like, "Well, if you do know me, then okay, what is my name?" You're the rich girl. I know this. I know this. Is it Lisa? <laughs> Thanks for that. And then, um, okay, then I guess maybe you're really him, but um, I try to like pull Isaac with me and then try to like bring him closer to the mirrors and show him his reflection. Uh, Isaac, uh, I, I don't know how to tell you, but you're kind of ugly. <laughs> we sure do look good together, but, uh, is there something going on here? So, he doesn't see the, the thing that I saw? No, but you do. Um, I wonder, like, so do you see anything weird with your reflection or not? I mean, I didn't think we'd gotten this close before, but no. I tried to look at the reflection again, but you don't look human here. That's not very nice. Your dick's going so fast. <laughs> uh, this is going a little crazy. <laughs> I try to like I look at you feeling a little a lot embarrassed and then I mean like I'm sorry maybe maybe I just need to go and rest or something. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I'll just go. You don't have to go. Well, I've been seeing weird things since we were outside the village. Hmm. Just out of curiosity. Is Lunamon with us? Yes. I've been carrying her the whole time. Well, well, specifically, is, is the voice of Lunamon with us? I, I was wondering if I see the same thing, to be honest. Uh, yes, I was actually going to let you know that you, uh, perhaps because you uh, share some kind of bond with Elise, do in fact see the same thing as Elise. Uh, I, said, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but... Are, are you sure you're really not from the mist or something? No more than you. We all came from the cloud at some point. I, I, I mean, you do you not remember? Did you see those things at all? Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot. Atlas knocked me on my ass, and then there was a lot of running. Oh, um, hmm. It's... Mind you, that was the episode I had technical difficulties. So <laughs> I actually don't remember it, but... You you make really nice coffee, I guess, but you you might want to do something about your looks and I, maybe your identity? I don't know how to put it. Tell me this. It's, you definitely don't look normal. Boss. I think there's something wrong with Lisa and Lucy Mond. <laughs> um, well, what do I look like, you two? What would you even call it, Elise? Well, well okay. before going on, I do wonder, Elise, would this be a conversation that you'd be wanting to have with a creature like that? It's more like I'm worried about him and, like, is he really my friend or not? This is what I want to know. Gotcha. All right. Well, then, proceed. <laughs> I'll be like, it's just that I believe that you're, you're my friend, and, but for some reason, like, ever since, like, we came here to the village, like, whenever I see your reflection and the other's reflection, you guys don't look human to me. 
Mm. Us two are all ugly. We've been spending way too much time with the angels. Lunamon is gonna like pull down on Elisa's shirt a bit and like try to get her attention. Well, I look at Lunamon and say, "What's up?" And Lunamon tries to whisper to Elise, uh, "Maybe ask him about something that happened before that." Um, I look at Isaac and be like, "Do you remember?" What we saw when you first came here? A bunch of zombies and Atlas trying to get us all, or backpack trying to get us all killed. Then I look at Luna and say, Yeah, he definitely <laughs> knows. <laughs> <and> definitely <laughs> him. I, I feel like Atlas trying to get us all killed is setting the bar too low. <laughs> too easy. <laughs> Speaking of backpack, where is he? Uh, he's mostly just found a quiet little alleyway to uh, draw his scribbles in. Isaac was asking Elise. Let's oh, ask oh. to chime in, but... Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> I believe Elise lost him somewhere along the way, much like a uh, parent with a child in a crowd, but... um. We need to get a leash. <laughs> well, he was here a moment ago. Like, well, I did went off on my own <laughs> since we're like inside the village, and I think it's safe inside. So I, yeah. Well, we passed the hotel while you were uh, creeping up on me there, secret admirer. Maybe we should go look for the library. Yeah, I guess we should. And, um, Revy, what are you doing during all of this? I'll be heading towards the gates. Because I want to get... I want to check out the surroundings of the place. Uh, the surroundings of the village? Correct. Gotcha. So you'd be allowed to make your rounds. Um, for the most part, the village is surrounded by the forest. However, it is backed by the mountains. Uh, as you know, there is the mine entrance to the village that you guys came through from the ravine. And then the, then for the most part, it's steep cliff faces. But there are some points where you're able to sort of climb the mountains? Luckily I can fly in Dor Doruga. <laughs> True. Um, but yes, that, that would be the uh, results of your little adventure. Val, as you uh, as you bid Magnanjaman adieu, do you have anything else to search for in the village? Well, did they fix up my clothes, or am I sitting there with no clothes until it gets fixed? Right, right. No pants party! <laughs> um, I'm assuming that the Magna Angel the Angel Woman did not, like, start stripping me down right there in front of them all, but I mean, your beauty is immaculate. Yeah, what does I care? However, no, you were taken to Hot Springs. You were given... Uh, robe to throw on as they took your clothes from you and uh, left to fix them up. And you were told to enjoy yourself. <laughs> that does not mean... Okay, well then I am in, I'm in the spring, uh, you know, working out all the, the muscle tension and stuff, <laughs> by just letting my back and everything rest in the hot, warm waters. Uh, but I will say when they tried to take the rag away from my face, mm -hmm. I, uh, I kept that one on. Gotcha. They'd definitely be a little concerned, however, they, uh, they wouldn't fight it. Um, and as you relax in the, uh, warm waters, you see, uh, little tiny fireballs floating above the water keeping it to temperature. 
Oh. <laughs> well, um, hello there, Demi Merriman. Hello. Hello. Thank, Thank you for keeping this hot spring warm. <laughs> well, it's one way to stay alive. <laughs> what, what do you mean, Demi Merriman? Well, if you're useful, you stay alive, and if you're not, you don't. <laughs> like, would you care to elaborate? Uh, it, um, as they'd crisscross around. Well, sure. If we're of no use to the village, why would we be in the village? The rules are simple. Those of our kind are not normally welcome here. And as they speak, it would come and go as they travel over the water's surface, replacing each other every here and there. All right. I will think, and I will... Um, can I roll a decipher intent to figure out, you know, basically what the... Nine Angelmon and them are doing to these poor Digimon? Um. I would take a knowledge check. Okay. And meanwhile, Atlas, were you just looking for a quiet place on the streets? Were you looking for a certain building? just tries to find a quiet place because he, one, got separated from the group, and two, he's in the city with crowds, so he doesn't like any of it, so he's probably going to go outside of the city. Gotcha. <laughs> so... Uh, okay, yeah, I did not do so hot. Uh, I rolled the wrong... I rolled... No, that's right, right? I don't know why I put the T5. Um, um it's right. It it wouldn't be a six. It it became like that because with the T five it only counted the one six and then it yeah, added five. So but, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plus five is sixteen. Uh yes. I, I, that was a mistake, so mm -hmm. on my putting a with, T five there. With sixteen you aren't able to really figure out what they're doing. However, simply from what you understand of Magna Angemon's character and what you know of the church to this point, they don't seem to value life very much. And for those that they do not consider beautiful, they, they v treat very poorly. So... Again, you don't know what's going on, but you wouldn't be surprised by whatever is going on. Okay. Um, Atlas, uh, you have actually found a decently quiet little place to read. It's inside the city walls, however, it is certainly on the outskirts of the city, and... No one pays it any mind. Well, <laughs> funny I should say that, but no one pays it any mind. They they almost pass by as if they no longer recognize you. This is just going to find, like, a nice, quiet corner mm -hmm. in that area and just sit down and start going through his stuff. Making like rechecking his inventory, like catching in his breath a bit, and uh, just just out of curiosity, I'll let you tell me how aware of at of his surroundings would you say Atlas is? Can I repeat that. How aware of his surroundings would you say Atlas is? He's not. Like he's he's more focused on 
himself right now than mm -hmm. you know his surroundings. So he's not really aware of where he is. He just found a quiet spot, so he's just staying there. Fair enough. Um, and Elise and Isaac, where do you pick up? To believe we were just kind of on the hunt for Atlas, but I didn't specify a library before, so. Um. Funny enough, while you'd certainly expect a library in a city of this size, um, as you go around and ask the little residents, they let you know that while they would like a library, the church doesn't see any use in a library. So there's no library around? No, the closest thing would be uh, the beauty magazine stands throughout the village. I turn to Isaac and be like, do you want to keep looking? There's a great many things I want to do, but a <laughs> wise man told me not today. So yes, <laughs> we will go find Atlas. Isaac will then turn to Coronamon. I think we should take to the skies. Got it in you today, pal? Oh, you know it. Too. <laughs> oh, you let me down. Anyway, Isaac's <laughs> Whoa, oh, this back. is on you, buddy. <laughs> oh, this is on me. I prompted you and you just sat there, you little fireball. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Something fell on my room. We, let's go over again. Let's fell go in your room. room. Something fell. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I didn't that, hear that you. That boner just like... dropped. Okay, that's what fell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, wait, did you hear it? The bottle falling? No, that was your balls dropping. I'm sorry. Oh. oh. <laughs> I sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was just the ball dropping. <laughs> 2023, y'all. Um. So you take to the skies. Uh, would you like to give me a perception roll? I would be happy to. Well, best, but not bad. Yeah, you certainly were going to find him regardless. However, it does take you a bit longer than you would have uh, you normally like. And part of the reason for this is because you actually find Atlas uh, on the part of the city that's uh, up against the edge of the mountains, and there's almost a a mist, a haze over where Atlas is that none of the other villagers uh, pay any mind to. <laughs> Again, because, uh, well, you'd recognize the area. This is where you exited from when you came to the village the first time when you went through the mines. Two birds, one stone. Let's go rally the others, Fireman. And I will fly back to Elise and fill her in. He secretly grabbed onto his le to fear mouse legs as he flew out. Wait, who grabbed grabbed onto fear mouse legs? Because fear mouse like let's go back to Elise and tell her it's like she literally grabbed onto fear mouse legs as he flew out. So she's like dangling off his legs. Oh, wait! <laughs> I don't think that happened, but <laughs> no, but that would be. Funny. I really don't think that someone with uh, Elise's constitution should be trying that, but... <laughs> we have a stowaway. Yep. <laughs> um, so, you, you, you obviously find your way back to Elise, like the split. Um, 
And as you're as you're flying through the skies, you also notice Ravi flying in the distance. Um, <laughs> Ravi, as you fly around, uh, is your plan just to like fly over the mountains and leave everyone else, or uh, are you gonna reconvene with the group? I'll reconvene with the group. All right. So it doesn't. It obviously doesn't take uh, much in the way of looking for you to notice the big glowing light stick in the sky even during mm -hmm. the daytime um so the four three slash four of you are reunited not that atlas would uh notice this um and valentine you are told to please enjoy your stay in the hot springs for as long as you'd like however your clothes have been uh fitted a bit more pro appropriately for what you requested. All right. Gratitude knows no bounds, uh, lady. Would you bathe with me? I will, uh, I will thank her and, um, you know, start getting out, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I can fetch my clothes and... Right, right. Fetch your clothes and your digivice and all of those sorts. Um, your virginity. <laughs> and then I will ask, also, are there any rooms that we could sleep in? But of course, there's, there's hotels around, though most of them aren't full these days for obvious reasons. So there should be plenty of rooms for you. Thank you. And then after I've, you know, gotten clothed, uh, I would go looking for the others. Gotcha. So, Isaac, as you uh, meet up with Ravi and Elise, what is it in particular that you discuss with them? Where Atlas is at? Has anyone seen Val? No. Why would I know where he is? Well, you were surveying this guy much longer than I. I figured if he came back from uh, Lord Fancy Pants, you'd have spotted him. No. I have not seen him. You like to pick and choose when you hate us, don't you? <laughs> Never said I liked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> feeling the love, girl. Feeling the love. Um. <laughs> what is it that you want? Why am I here? I have other things to do. Isaac will just hug her. Ooh, <laughs> Get off of me. What? <laughs> I'll throw him off. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what do I need to roll to stay latched? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sure. Uh, both of you give me a fight roll. I'm pretty sure I know who's gonna win. <laughs> that damn minus three. <laughs> Not that seven's impressive, but it's something. <laughs> you said fight, correct? Yes. And minus the three. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn. It almost happened, too. Yeah. It almost happened. <laughs> Did I yeah. spend a point of inspiration? <laughs> um, Revy, Revy fights fights your hug off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as all of this is happening, 
a very stylish Tinkerman, not not like the unstylish forest Tinkermans oh, that you look at these saw. Peasants. Mm. <laughs> I'll hug him too. <laughs> the, not not Peterman, Tinkerman. <laughs> very small, but very stylish. Would uh, anyone have a birdhouse? <laughs> come up to your group. I was told that your friend requested rooms for himself and you guys at my hotel. Sure. And and she would be carrying keys much larger than herself. Take a load off there for you, and Isaac will grab the keys. Oh, great. And she would, uh, he would drop something, and as you, uh, grab the keys, you begin to shrink, and she's like, whoa, 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 make sure to give one to each of your friends before, give that back. And she'd snatch it away from you, and you'd grow back. My hotel is right there, she'd point to the ground. <laughs> now, give each of your friends a key. I mean, last time I touched Where's this them. Hotel? Right there. She'd point to the ground and you'd see a tiny little bump in the road. A very tiny bump. Hard to notice. About the size of a pebble. Do people ever step on your hotel? The house insurance must be astronomical. <laughs> it's a very sturdy hotel. Is this the cheapest hotel you guys offer? <laughs> How are the earthquakes? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is actually quite a luxurious hotel. Thank you very much. He looks it, I guess. <laughs> Part of me just really wished Fireman tried to eat her like a dog snapping at a bug. <laughs> okay, I'll grab a key. And you uh, begin to shrink down with your key. And she'll let you know to keep it on you as you get much smaller than the Tinkerman. And, uh, you'll actually see that the hotel is far fancier than anything in the village. Well, maybe not as fancy as the temple, but far less tacky. <laughs> less slaves. <laughs> less slaves. As far as you know. Um... But yes, uh, is everyone, is everyone taking a key for the hotel? I will inform the Tinkerman that should it suit his fancy or one of his minions, one of our friends waits near the mountainside and another one is still with Magna Angemon. <laughs> and she'll thank you for the information before uh, continuing her search for your friends. <laughs> and eventually everyone will have their keys and turn in for the night. And well, is it possible just for me to talk to everyone before they go to bed. It is. I was going to ask if uh, anyone had conversations they would like to uh, have before going to bed, and if everyone has an idea of what they would like to do once they wake up. So, Elise, you have the floor. Yeah, so once everyone tries to go to their rooms, I'll like try to call for everyone and be like, hey guys, I think... I think we need to talk before we go to bed. Sounds like a plan to me. Fine. Uh, Sukazimon will float over to Revy. <laughs> so is Atlas gonna come too? I'd grab it like a doll. And Sukazimon well would say, Thanks for your help. Oh, that's, I don't, that's, no, don't say thank you. Don't speak. <laughs> that's that's a good question. Question, Atlas. Will you accept Tinkerman's key 
and enter the hotel, or are you just going to camp out where you are? He's just going to camp out. Like a vagabond. Like, Got it. He, he, he'll give him the key, but Mushmon's going to be the one taking it, and then as Aqua see Mushmon shrink, he'll snatch the key and throw it away. And then he'll just sleep outside. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so... Elise, you have the floor, but Atlas is not there. Okay. So, since Atlas is not there, so I'll try to, like... Um, so, everyone, I think... I just found out something, and I have two important things to discuss right now. Well, first of all, like, I found out that the baby Digimon keeps um, disappearing every day. Do you guys know about it? Fortunate. So, when I was uh, relaxing in the hot springs, I was talking to the Demi Merriman there, and they had mentioned that if you are not useful to this village, you do not get to live. So there is a chance that they might be um, getting rid of the Digimon that are of no use. Well, other than that, like, if you don't have anything else to talk about, that there's another thing that I'm really worried about. So, and then I'll pause for a moment and then look at everyone and then... So, guys, I really think you should get your identities back because for some reason like whenever i see your reflection somewhere you guys don't look human anymore and so far i with isaac like he's looking worse than the first time i saw his reflection isaac will then make a crazy monster face as best he can i mean our plan was to get our identities back but are you thinking that we should do that right now, before resting? Well, not exactly. Of course we need to rest first. It's just that I think it's getting worse, and I think we really should do it immediately, as soon as possible. I will not argue with that. I agree full hard. Are we done? Well, if nobody wants to talk about it anymore, then yeah. So the first thing we'll do in the morning is get our identity. Then we come back and kill Magna Angemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been over here to... Never mind. I don't know if I should or not. We're going to see if we cancel the... Ep not cancel. End of the episode. What's the plan? <laughs> Who's going on? Hmm? Hey. <laughs> You've been debating what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but no <laughs> okay well oh wait do we have a plan for when everyone wakes up to get to get your identities back that's what we're doing let's do it do you guys know how to I oh. do not we can ask Magna Angemon, I guess. That sounds like a good plan. Well, seeing as you guys are nothing like those things, I'd say maybe it has something to do with them? It was the like Mist Gremlins back. that took it from us, and if we look like Mist Gremlins, I blame the Mist Gremlins. Alright, let's go talk to them in the morning then. So where would we meet up? Probably outside the hotel. <laughs> Last I saw Bookworm, good old backpack, he was hanging out where we had to go anyway, so if he's still alive in the morning, we'll meet there. I guess that's a plan. Gotcha. Alright, so yes, I believe we can end the session there. Cool. <laughs> and when we return for session two, I will have been mildly well-rested. <laughs>
okay. <laughs> Just staying in character, Isaac's probably gonna go through another depressive spiral and have some mental breakdowns. <laughs> Over? Well, you know, we were all just traumatized. Going to sleep's probably going to be a scary thing to do. And I, out of character, have been debating in character going on a solo dark path here. I'm about to side with Eidmon and burn this whole fucking village down. <laughs> Wanted entertainment, clown man, let's do it. 